Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today I'm redoing some of my videos. This one is iTunes CoverFlow 3D Effect with Reflection. Now one of the reasons I'm redoing some of these is so that I can make sure that you can see them in Photoshop Elements 9, that I'm not doing any kind of copyright infringement. I'm using Flickr Creative Commons uh, images and last but not least they're in the highest quality that YouTube will allow you to view without getting too slow. Now let's go ahead and start this. If you haven't done so already, hit D on your keyboard. That puts black in the foreground and white in the background. Then hit X and that will swap them around. We're not using any control keys, we're just using the standard D and X keys. I want the black background and I'll show you why. When you go to File and New, Blank File, you don't get an option to create a black one. So I'm putting black in my background so that I will get a black background. The next thing I want you to do is pick something like 14 by 10 and 300 uh, pixels per inch resolution because I want you to have a landscape uh, canvas to work with. Select OK and there is your black canvas. We're going to use the file place command by going to the file menu and going to place. I'm using Linolfian from the Creative Commons Flickr license and as long as I give him some credit then he's going to let me use the images from there. So I'm going to go to my photos and I'm going to use Linolfi in there. And as you can see, it places the photo in there for you. You can resize it. When you're happy with your resized photo, you can click the green checkbox or you can hit the Enter key. Now once you're done, there's a little icon down here that says that this is a smart object. Now a smart object, according to Adobe, is an object that allows you to perform non-destructive transforms. You can scale, rotate, skew, distort, distort, perspective transform, or warp a layer without using the original information. So isn't that cool? You get to keep the resolution and not destroy it. So there we go, we have the first one. Let's go ahead and place the second one using the place command. Once again, I'm going to use Linolfian, and here we go and I'm going to move this over to the left a bit. I want to make sure they're about the same height so I'm going to drag one of the corners and I'm going to resize this so they're about the same height and when I'm happy I'm going to hit the return. Last but not least I'm going to go to file place again and lastly there is the third Lenolfian picture I'm going to move it over to the right hand side and I'm going to grab hold of the corner and then resize this. Now on some of these, for some reason, you have to hold down the shift key to keep the aspect ratio intact so that it doesn't skew it, making it too thin or too squatty. When I'm happy, I hit enter. Now I do have the wrong picture on the top layer. This is kind of a tutorial, so we're going to look at how to change your layer order. Well, you click on the very bottom layer. That's the one in the middle. And I'm going to drag this one to the top, stopping each at each point. And you can see now that I have this particular one, and the other two pictures are kind of hiding behind that one. Now, these are visibility layers. I call them eyeballs. So if you click the eyeball, this particular picture is still there. I'm just turning it off because I want to change the perspective to 3D with these two pictures. So let's start with the right hand one here. I'm going to click on it. Then I'm going to go up to Image, Transform, Perspective. I'm going to grab hold of one of the corners and drag it towards the middle. And as you can see, it's changing it to a 3D perspective. I hit Enter and there we go. Now I'm going to go down to my next picture. Once again, go to Image, Transform, Perspective grab hold of one of the corners, drag it, oops, drag it up and as you can see 3D looking effect. So let's temporarily put the third picture back in there and as you can see it's starting to look three-dimensional now. There we go. This one's angled toward the back, this one's angled toward the back, and then this one's directly in the center. Now we need the reflection to make this look really nice. I'm going to start with the top reflection right here. I'm going to do the Command J, 
command J duplicates whatever is on that layer. Now reflections are normally upside down. Last time I looked, so I'm going to go to image. I'm going to go to rotate. Now there's two different rotates here. You can flip vertical, which would flip the entire image vertical, or we can just flip the one layer. Now that's the one we want, flip layer vertical. And as you can see, it only flipped that one image. Now we need to move it. This is the move tool right here, and I can drag this down. There we go. So now it looks like a reflection. The only problem is most reflections aren't 100%, so we have to give it some sort of a gradient or a reflection to it. This is where Photoshop Elements 9 comes in really handy. This is the layer mask. If I add a layer mask right here, then I go over here to my gradient tool. I want to make sure that I have just this linear gradient selected up here. I want to make sure that it goes from white to black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the top picture here. And then I'm going to drag this down to the bottom of the picture. And then I'm going to let go. And as you can see, it created a reflection right there. We're going to do this two more times so you get a chance to see exactly what we're doing. I'm going to click on this object right here. I'm going to hit Command J. Command J is going to what? It's going to duplicate this image on a new layer. I'm going to go to Image, Rotate, and not flip vertical, but flip layer vertical, and use the Move tool to move that particular image down. Now, as you can see, we need to do some rotating because this doesn't line up quite the way it's supposed to. So if I hold my cursor very close to the corner, it turns into a double-headed round arrow, and I can kind of move this as I need to, and rotate this as I need to to make sure that the reflection looks like it's supposed to. When I'm happy, hit the green check mark or hit the enter key. Now, we also need to add a layer mask to that, and to make this fade, we need to add the gradient tool. So once again, I'm going to start from about her part and go down to her part on the bottom. And then I'm going to let go. And as you can see, we have a reflection there. Last time, we're going to get to practice this. I'm going to click on the left-hand picture. We're going to do the Command-J, right? We're going to copy Command-J or Control-J if you have a PC. We need to flip the image by going to Image, Rotate, Flip Layer Vertically. Then we're going to use the Move tool to move this down. We're also going to rotate this by moving close to one of the corners and dragging this so that it lines up. And when we're happy, hit Enter. Last but not least, we need to fade this. So we're going to add a layer mask here and we're going to go to a gradient, start from her part at the top, go to her part at the bottom, and let go, and there we have it. The only problem is, is that you can see that there are some overlaps in here. And if this was a true reflection, we wouldn't be seeing any of this reflection on top of this one. So we need to change that. Well, it looks like we're just about done, except these bothersome areas right here that have overlaps in the two different reflections. Now we're going to need to fix this. Now over here we can't cut this out because this is a smart object and we can't cut this out so it's a smart object. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to right click on this particular little thumbnail and simplify our layer. Now only simplify this layer and this layer. These are the ones with the layer mask. We're going to leave the last one alone, the one that's in the middle. So I'm going to right click over here on this thumbnail and I'm going to simplify this layer. There we go. Now I need to select this part because we're going to delete the reflections from behind this. And the simplest way to do that is by holding the control key down. You'll notice that the pointer changed to a finger with the little marching ants. And if we click on that, it makes a nice box. What it's doing is it's selecting anywhere that has pixels on there. 
and on this particular layer there's only pixels on our reflection. Now if I click on this layer which happens to be our right reflection layer and I hit delete you'll notice that it deleted the double area. Now let's go ahead and scroll down to the next layer which would be the left reflection and if I do it again and hit delete once again it deletes just that overlap area that was in the marching ants. Now get the marching ants to go away you can hit command D and now you can see we have the iTunes cover flow effect with the reflection here, reflection here, and reflection here just as it's supposed to be. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. Give me a thumbs up on this one. Just give me a little bit of a comment, or if you have a question or something, just write it in the comment box. This is Chucky. Have a great day.